Gordon Banks rose from the ashes of bagging coal in Sheffield to win it all at Wembley. It was a clash of the titans in the Mexican heat. Guadalajara, 1970, Carlos Alberto with an inviting pass in behind the English rear guard, latched onto by Gerzino who hung it in the air for Pele to rise and finish the script. But something, or someone, changed the ending. What stood in the way of Pele's powerful downward header was the greatest save of all time, a moment that came to define the career of a gentle and humorous man from Sheffield. Gordon Banks has died aged 81 but he will last long in the memory as England's World Cup winning goalkeeper and the man who pulled off that famous save. Dash farewell to England's greatest goalie, 1966 World Cup hero Gordon Banks dies aged 81 after battle with cancer, as his former teammate Sir Jeff Hurst leads tributes from World of Football Dash the save of the century. How Gordon Banks stunned the world with incredible acrobatic stop against Pele in 1970 World Cup Classic, read Sports Mail's interview with England's World Cup winning goalkeeper from 2016 on how he got poisoned at the 1970 World Cup and why that save wasn't his best ever Banksy, as he was affectionately known, is widely considered as one of the best goalkeepers the game has ever produced. He was named Football Writers Footballer of the Year in 1972 and FIFA Goalkeeper of the Year an incredible six times. The English Football Hall of Fame inductee was also named as one of the greatest living footballers in 2004, from possibly the greatest the man whose goal-bound header he foiled. Pele even unveiled a statue of Banks in his honor outside of Stokes Stadium in 2008, 38 years after their worlds collided in Guadalajara. The great shot stopper was born into humble beginnings in 1937. He was raised in Sheffield's working class area of Tensley. His physical strength grew alongside his work ethic as he hauled coal, dug trenches and laid bricks to earn his keep aged 15. He said in a BBC interview, I didn't realize at the time it was building the muscles in my arms and legs. It helped me in a roundabout way. It was while playing for a local amateur side Millspool that he was offered a trial by Chesterfield in March 1953. This move was his first step in a journey to the zenith of football. Banks served his country between the sticks and on the front line. He completed his national service in Germany where he met his wife Ursula in 1955. She was working in a shop selling shirts and Gordon was one of her customers. Banks had three children with Ursula, Robert. Born July 1958, Wendy, 1963, and Julia, 1969. He separated from Ursula during his stint in America with Fort Lauderdale Strikers, but the couple reunited when Banks returned to England to be appointed as a coach at Port Vale. Banks had an unsuccessful sojourn into management, feeling that Port Vale's players didn't take his advice on board. He also applied for vacant positions at Lincoln City and Rotherham United, but was rejected. He instead accepted the role as manager of Alliance Premier League club Telford United, but after leaving the club temporarily to have surgery, he was sacked on his return. He was offered the position of raffle ticket seller on his return, and accepted the post in the belief that it would entitle him to the money owed to him in the terms of his management contract. He eventually had to settle for 50% of his contract and later stated, It broke my heart. I did not want to stay in the game. Banks' time between the sticks was much more successful. He made 628 appearances during a 15-year career in the Football League and was named by FIFA as the second-best goalkeeper ever after the great Lev Yashin. Banks truly established himself after Leicester paid Chesterfield £7,000 for his services a large sum in 1959. It was here that Banks started his upward trajectory, becoming a club legend and soon forcing his way into the national setup. In April 1967, it came as a huge shock to Leicester fans when manager Matt Gilley sold Banks to Stoke to make way for the young Peter Shilton. But this was just another chapter in Banks's glittering career. The statue outside the stadium stands as evidence to the impact he made at the club. With Banks between the sticks, Stoke punched above their weight and made a name for themselves in cup competitions, reaching the semi-finals of the FA Cup twice. Banks never managed to get his large hands on the famous trophy, 
but found solace in the League Cup which he won in March 1972 after a vital penalty save which saw his side through to the final. At the end of that season, he was named FWA Player of the Year, the first goalkeeper to do so in 16 years. In 1972, a car crash threatened to derail Banks's career when it left him blind in one eye. He was 35 but still England's no one. His injuries left him needing 200 stitches, together with around 100 micro-stitches inside the socket of his right eye. Not to be stopped, however, he continued to play in America five years after the accident. In the U.S. he was dubbed the Great One-Eyed Goalie and was named the North American Soccer League's best in his position, despite being in his 40s. It was the day before the game in which he thwarted Pele's header that Banks received the fruits of his labor, being honored with an obi. Throughout his career and his life outside of football he has received much adulation, nowhere more so than in his home city of Sheffield. He was immortalized as a legend, being the first to be honored on the city's Walk of Fame. Fortune faded for the great man later in his life, losing substantial money in a failed hospitality business venture. He was, however, helped out by Lester, who offered him a belated testimonial match. Banks sold his coveted World Cup winner's medal and final cap at Christie's in 2001 for over £150,000 and reportedly split the money between his three children. His fiercest opponent came in the form of kidney cancer, from which he had been suffering since 2015. Aged 81, he reached the end of a journey that rose from the ashes of the coal trade to the glamour of being the best in the world, with fame and adoration every step of the way. Legends never truly die and Banks will always be remembered as the man who nearly stopped that great Brazilian side of 1970, and who stopped Pele.